<sighs> so, I promised the return of San Jose. This one is not... Oh, okay. So this is a return of a story from a long, long time ago in San Jose's past. In um, Back in March of 2017, a young girl by the name of Elena Mondragon was a passenger in a car that was pulling out of an apartment complex um, when an unmarked van filled with police officers uh, tried to cut it off. And at the time, the police said that the BMW's driver was suspected of being wanted by the police, had rammed into the van, but witness statements differ on this matter, shall we say. Um, Well... (laughs) They felt the vehicle was a threat, and so they opened up on the pregnant teenager and shot and killed her and the baby, as it were. So the return of this is that her family was awarded $21 million in the lawsuit. Um, Yes. Uh, Civil rights and wrongful death suit. Uh, The jury's decision was a tremendous verdict for the family, says the, uh, the, the plaintiff's attorney. But five years on, the family lost a grandchild, a child, and was given $21 million of the taxpayer's money to supposedly make them whole. Because San Jose's police department botched an arrest, pretty much, and they ended up shooting a pregnant teenager and killing them as of course. <clears throat> oh, this was fun. This was fun. Oh, I have to turn that off, don't I? That's a shame. Get the ball. Oh, what for? I just- there we go. This is Joshua, uh, Joshua, Texas. This will be the Joshua Police Department that we're interacting with. Um, <clears throat> all you need to know is that the the person that they're interacting, they're choosing to interact with, um, is a young black man who uh, has one, for the purposes of this story, one interesting factoid about him. He is a recent graduate of a police academy. So the young black man existing in Texas, who is a recent uh, graduate of the police academy, is going to interact with these um, officers of the supposed law. Can we see some ID? What for? I just What's What's your probable cause? to ask me for ID. It does not have a handicapped placard. Read the plate, man. You're, you're, you don't even know what you're talking about. DV. That's disabled veteran plate. We can park in handicapped spots. Let me see some ID, please. No. I have never seen anybody wear a police academy That's your business. After That's your business. Graduate. I wear it all the time. Do my, do, do, do my training. Now, I can do that. 
because I'm a graduate, I can wear the uniform. Have I you can been wear certified it. as a peace officer? Of course. Officer? I have my certification. What are you talking about? You why, don't you run the, why don't you run the plate? Why don't you run the plate? Run well, the plate, man. I gave you permission. Did. And what did you see? Nothing you had to see the certificate, certification. Contact T. Cole. Why don't you contact them? You saw my name. Call T. Cole. T. Cole stands for Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, which serves as a regulatory agency for all peace officers in Texas. Run, yeah, run it. Run it. Yeah. Run it. Call T. Cole. But you have no, you have no justification of probable cause to run up on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Who was the academy director when you were there? Contact them. Who is it? Ask him. Navarro College. Call him. Well, the reason I did that, call him. I know they just graduated. Call him. You could have done all of that. You could have done all of that while I was inside. I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. I know. I know about Joshua Philippe BD. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know yeah, what? Yeah. 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 When'd you graduate? I don't have to tell you anything. Don't ask me any questions because I'm not answering. Okay. Yeah. What? Why? 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 Are you detaining you detaining me? I don't want you to get hit by the car. Just no, no. Here. Then my question is, are you detaining me? I don't know what's going okay, on. Okay, so then don't tell me where to go. No, 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 no. I'm sorry to ask me to come over here, so I just Okay, well, well, you need to find out because I'm going to walk away from you, get in my car, and drive away. Well, so you need you to find out, find out from him. Okay. Do you mind holding off on leaving until I find out what's going on to see if you ask him? Because that's my captain. He's in charge of this. If I, okay, if I he's ask him, he's, he's not, not he's not too smart because first of all, I, I mean, first of all, even you know, if I have disabled veteran plate, I can park in a handicapped spot. Yeah, even you know they that. Just no, that. No, 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 they didn't just change that. Yeah, it's they, been it started, that way. Well, it started in September. That it was that way. No, sir, it's been that way for years. I've had this for five years. Well, it's already been I, that way. And and, and if September, he's a captain, he should have known that, <laughs> but he didn't. <laughs> he just saw he just saw this. And he saw this, and he wanted to make a problem. That's your reputation there, Joshua. Come on, man. Yes, it is. <laughs> How many black officers you got? One. One. <laughs> yeah, we only have one right now. One, right, one. I know, I know. And you, and, and you barely, you barely let him in. You barely let him in. Barely let him in. And your reputation is already bad from years ago. You had a corruption scandal. You had a corruption scandal. You had to get rid of a lot of your, I was your say, PDs. That was way before I got here. And you got one. Not I'm before sure. him, though. Are you finished? I gotta go. Are you finished? He said one second. Where's the corruption scandal? <laughs> 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 you wanna get into your history? He did call Navarro. Okay, so then, so then, you know, you're feeling small now, aren't you? I you shouldn't run up on people. You'd have no probable cause. If you wanted to follow me and run my plate, you could have done that. Talk to anybody? No. Well, I don't have to talk to you. And you did I don't have to talk to you. That's right. <laughs> I already told you that. Waste my time and you. You're supposed to be a captain, and you don't know d disabled plates have a right to park in a, in a parking spot. And you violating people's rights, huh? running up on them without probable cause. I'm in a uniform. Doing the same thing for you Alan, for free. Alan Eddings, who is the so what? I don't care what he thinks. I'm a graduate and I have T code certification. No, so I don't, don't care what he says. I don't care what he says. I have T code certification. I have T code certification. Not. Yes, I do. That's it what you expired. checked in. It expired. Who says who? My my certification doesn't say expired. Okay. You want it to be expired because you see brown skin. So take a walk. Walk of shame. Walk of shame. Love to see the infighting, and I love to see the lack of realization on this man's part. Homie, you're the outsider. Like, yeah, you, you literally joined a racist thing. You're a black dude who joined a racist thing. <laughs> I don't know how much room to call it out he has. Like, homie, you legitimized it by participating. I, you know, yeah, oh, yeah, Jay, 
for the fact that they didn't put him on the ground is actually stunning. We actually should be giving these fuckers awards for being like not to for not escalating that situation. Like legitimately, that was some of the best de-escalation we've probably seen from fucking Texas cops in ages. They showed remarkable restraint. I know, right? Like that's 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 how low the bar is at this point. It really is. Oh yes, this this woman. Um, this this woman has been going after this case. What is her name? Vicky Baker, also Texas, by the way. Jesus Christ! I mean, it's just. Texas, 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 Texas. Like, it just gets that way at a certain point. So she's the woman who had SWAT team literally, like, um, destroy her fucking house. Um, and then the city refused to pay for damages that, that they caused. And, they like, they've always just been kicking this case around. This case has been around for a few, a couple of years now, at least. Yeah. Um, jury ruled that she, uh, in her favor, and she's entitled to the repair costs, to some total of $60,000. The legal fees on this case alone for the city far, far outstrip $60,000. Guaranteed at this point. They fought this woman tooth and nail to a district court judge, to U.S. district court judge, just so they didn't want to have to pay $59,656.59 for the repairs to this woman's house. That's it. They fought tooth and nail, and they lost in the end. Fucking Jesus, fuck. 60 is a pittance compared to more, mo, uh, most settlements. Yeah, uh, they just, they chilling effect. They want to prove that they will fight you. That's it. It's a chilling effect. They, they want to show that they're not, no one. If you come, come at them with a claim, they're not paying. You, ha you will have to fight to the fucking U.S. district courts to get this. Yeah, it's a chilling effect. That's what they're after. Oh... Half of their fucking stratagem, frankly. Um. Oh yeah. Um. That was a that was an interesting uh, little aside about the the Eva Morales, uh, the the hus uh, husband of Eva Morales in Ovalde, Texas. Um, the police officer. Um, he tried to save her after she was shot. Um, but apparently she, she called him and he tried to move forward into the hallway and they fucking detained him and took his gun away from him and escorted him off the scene. So one of the cops finally decides to break ranks and do something while, while they're sitting there fucking playing with their dicks. Fucking he finally decides only because only because his own wife is in there bleeding and dying now. He's like, fuck it, I'm going in. So what do they do? They detain him. They disarm him and detain him. He literally, quote, he was detained. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> the one cop, the one cop who breaks ranks and is like, I'm going in. I'm fucking, I'm doing something only because it's my own wife finally. Fuck them kids, apparently. I'm going in and I'm doing this and his fucking fellow cops pin him to the fucking ground, take his gun from him and fucking throw him to the back of the line, basically. I swear to God, that Uvalde group is just, oh, they're so amazing. Those are just some of the best cops we have, huh? Fucking, oh, wait, they're symbolic. They're representative of all of the police. Oh, really? Oh, it's, it's pretty much business as usual. Hmm, fascinating. Oh. <sighs> Crabs and fucking buckets. I know, right? Um, I mean, <laughs> can you sue them for accessory to murder or something? I don't know. Like, on top of the regular murder? Um, <laughs> Zippy, all cats are beautiful. Oh, uh, remember the fucking South Dakota um, uh, attorney general who hit a dude? Um, and then tried to like act like he thought it was a fucking moose and like went home and like was super sketchy about it. He knew he hit somebody. 
Um, fucking, it was a whole series and sequence of evidence that kept coming, kept coming out showing that this guy was for sure aware, um, of what was going on that he didn't think he was, uh, convicted on, uh, impeachment charges, uh, in the fatal crash and removed from office. So while the, ju- the justice system said, uh, you know, yeah, we, he's a fucking attorney. Gen- he was the state attorney. He was the attorney general, right? Like, what were they, dude, that's good old boy network 101 there. Of course he pulled some deals, but the, uh, at least they got him out of office. Yeah. But yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. He hit that dude knew he hit that dude and fled the scene and then went home and, you know, made up a story and called it in and that whole thing. Um, yeah, no struck with a vehicle. Dead manslaughter. Yeah. Killed the dude. Um, let's see. Oop. There we go. (laughs) This is angel, uh, uh, Bennett, uh, Benitez. Yes, this is Angel Benitez. Um, Mesa, Arizona, just paid out $250,000 involving a civil rights lawsuit um, because of the shooting of this unarmed man. Um, Angel was killed two years ago. Um, this last couple of weeks, uh, Mesa, Arizona agreed to pay out $250,000 to make this just go away. Apparently, um, they found him asleep in a reportedly stolen car in the parking lot of a Panda Express. He woke up, drove off, and they say he refused to pull over for a traffic stop. They say they found him in the uh, parked in the Tempe apartment complex near Evergreen Road. Um, officers stated that he uh, reached for his waistband, um, and they perceived that as a threat. Multiple officers opened fire at that point. Benitez had no weapons on him. Of course he died at the scene and witnesses at the scene, uh, stated that his hands were up and he was complying with officers at the time. Uh, the body cam footage does in fact corroborate a portion of this, but not a portion of this because there is, um, footage that has yet been handed over sex in the butt. Um, so yes, there are still calls from the family and the community for, and I quote here, transparency involving the incident. So good luck. God bless. No, that sort of thing is not public. It has to be released by the police department through a whole host of bureaucratic actions and reactions. And if you get the right court decisions in place, you don't even have to release it. Or it can be lost. Did you know we lose footage all the time, too? That happens. Yes, it's not automatically public property in most locales. Though some towns and cities do have different regulations on this. Most do not. Yes. Isn't that fun? Yes. Lost. It's a shame how that happens. Orange County got got caught losing some documents in a fucking portable paper shredder one night. Um Oh yeah. Aka, yeah. Austin, Texas lost a shit ton of data. Bunch. Um, yes, <laughs> cupcake. Yes. That's somebody's username. Uh, oh, Jay, way beyond that. <laughs> oh, anyway. So yes, just to, you know, um, 
So, <laughs> what was he running for? Don't know. So, let me do this. There it is. All right. Rhode Island State Senate candidate. This is the police officer Republican opponent. This is the progressive black woman who is the Democrat at a pro-choice rally. And this is him striking her multiple times. Um, you will uh, you'll notice the headline here that the officer running for state Senate has dropped out after punching a opponent. Yes. So that's the uh, <clears throat> sort of level. No. Uh, oh, is he on paid vacation? Uh, in fact, I don't believe he is. Um, he was off duty. Um, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Aka. Um, yes, he is on paid vacation. What's up, sunshine? Yes, he's he is on at present on paid vacation. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> God bless my state. God bless my home state. I don't know if Facebook would even load here. All right. This is not as, this isn't as dramatic as you hope it would be. Um, so the Vermont State Police claimed that, uh, it, 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 uh, they stated that a, uh, a man uh, behind the, basically control of a, an excavator attacked two troopers when they attempted to arrest his, his son, which again, as a Vermonter, this just speaks to me. <laughs> For all available units, I've got 343 and 254 in a 1010 at 178. It's just so redneck. That is so rural. That is so rural. It's so rural. Uh. <laughs> he just takes a swipe at him. Just takes a little swipe at him. A little swipe at him. He didn't he didn't mean to hurt him. He didn't mean to hurt him. Yeah, just trying to unarrest a pal. That's all that was happening there. Um Boys being boys. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's just in that category of idiot that I'm, I don't even need to worry about sex in the butt. Um, uh, all I could tell you is that that's one of the people that my mod staff is concerned about. So therefore not a good look. I trust my people. Um, as an aside, you might be amused. Um, uh, you might be amused that my local DA's office is unhappy with me because I convinced a judge that they had to turn over literally every paper and email from a 2016 murder case because they might have ha been there might have been prosecutorial misconduct. If I kill myself with two in the back of the head, oh Marcus, good on you, 
Good on you. Yeah, uh, Goat Daddy, I would re- recommend not arguing with the very well-schooled attorney on legal matters. <laughs> Unless maybe you have a law degree of your own. Um, so, oh, yes. Okay, so remember when, um, was it last? Uh, a couple weeks ago, week ago. Um, Google.com is a degree, right? Yes. Um, so you remember when the uh, Proud Boys stormed that fucking um, library reading in uh, in Wilmington, North Carolina? Fucking the <laughs> stupid fucking. Either way, the Proud Boys were escorted in by the local sheriff's department into the library all the way into the room. They were walked in and there's, there's literal like here. Consulting beforehand, right off, right here, right off screen, but still just captured within. Here he is walking in. Here's escorting him all the way back. Here's him guarding at the door. Fucking, like, literally the sheriff's department walked those proud boys into that library room to start shit. Yeah. Just, just, you know. So, you know... These fuckers are, you know, essentially <laughs> the police walked domestic terrorists into a room that had children in it. Just so you know. Oh, oh no, no, no. Exactly. You know, it very much, they really were. Um, yeah, they wanted to start some shit with the, uh, the uh, drag queen reading. It, Des very much so. They're not uh, they're not domestic terrorists though. They're not looking to maintain. They they actually aren't. The police aren't domestic terrorists by definition. Their uh, terrorists are looking to use political uh, uh, violence to engage in political means to cha- uh, to engage in change. The police's job is to maintain the status quo. Um, they do share uh, uh, of um, the police have a monopolization a monopolization of, of violence of force from the state, but uh, terrorist is uh, reclaims or expropriates the violence from the, from the state for the purposes of their use. So similar means though, similar means. Um, so yes, does. Yes. I would that wholeheartedly. I would agree. Yes. They're most assuredly a, an occupying force that that definition they meet to a T. Um, so, I mentioned this one night, um, and I wanted to mention it during a uh, Popo's Bizarre Adventures while we were doing this. So Cleveland, UK, uh, for the uh, non, uh, uh, for the, um, uh, the for the Americans in the room, Cleveland exists in the UK. Most of our town names are either stolen from uh, indigenous people of Spanish speaking in Spain or um, the UK for the most part. A little bit of Europe, yeah. It's just ridiculous. So Cleveland exists. Cleveland's in the UK, just so you know. Um, a dude killed himself because he got... Okay, so he, he, saw, he shoplifted some Greg's sausage rolls. All right, so for the, for the Brit bongers in chat, fucking... Yeah, this dude, he shoplifted some Greg's sausage rolls. All right, he gets, uh, he gets caught... He gets processed. The police t- give him his uh, like processing his his like exit paperwork from being arrested and ticketed to all of that sort of stuff, right? Only this motherfucker's document doesn't say this. He goes home. 
He's hanging out with his girlfriend. She asks to see the paperwork. He shows her the paperwork. And on the paperwork, what does it say that he was arrested for? Is it for shoplifting sausage rolls from Greg's? No, it's pedophilia. It is sexual contact with a minor. The girlfriend does not believe a word that falls out of this man's mouth after this point. She tells other people. The community begins to shun him. People turn their backs on him. It becomes insane for him. He ends up taking his own life because the police fucked up his paperwork to the point that the society then did what they do with somebody who has been credibly accused of pedophilia, which is what has just happened. So, you know, dude offed himself because he got mislabeled as a pedophile and his girlfriend was a, a gossipy cunt. And, um, yeah. Good job, society. Good job, society. Just, just applause all around. Everyone take a bow. We did just take a winning lap. This is a truly, truly a, um, a, a we did it Reddit moment. Yeah, this is a truly we did it Reddit moment. Everybody just take a fucking bow. <sighs> Humans, we did it moment. Yes, we live in a pedo jacket society. Very much so. Yeah, that shit could, as evidenced. Poor guy. His name is Brian Temple. He's 34 years old. Look, can we can we acknowledge that like fucking for the record? You know, this dude, this poor dude. Yeah. He didn't even know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. He was, quote, subjected to verbal and physical abuse and his home was attacked. Seven months later, he, um, yeah. Oh, yes. Bridge Center. Uh, Bridge City Center. This dude, this place is hilarious. Um, Jefferson Parish. So for those that are astute, uh, Marcus, as far as I'm concerned as well. Um, for those who are astute, you know we're in Louisiana. The Bridge City Center for Youth. Um, cheers, Pizza Gate. Um, what's up, bruv? Um, the Bridge City Center, uh, for youth is in Jefferson Parish, so county, Jefferson County, Louisiana. Um, they had to have SWAT teams and like deputies, rein like reinforced deputies to sent in because 20 juveniles took the facility over. They just took it over. <laughs> it was under their full control. They straight up prison rioted 20 kids, 20 fucking juveniles, <laughs> 20 kids said, no, it's our place now. And it took multiple SWAT teams and fucking deputies to reseize the institution. <clears throat> Uh, oh, uh, and um, some of them escaped. They uh, Five of them, I believe, escaped and were then recaptured. Um, they, yeah, like, some of them got away too. They just didn't know what to do, right? F most, most people don't, you don't have a plan for that, right? Especially at like 17s. You know, you don't really have a prison break living on the lamb plan formulated yet. That's some hardened criminal shit right there. Um, so, you know, of course they were quickly recaptured, it seems like. But 
Yeah, 20 kids took a juvenile fucking detention. It's a prison, by the way. Here, I can get you a fucking picture of it. It's a goddamn jail. Like, there's no... Like, it's not a prison, It's a, but it is a jail. It's a fucking jail. Right? Like, it's a jail. Right? 20 of them took it over, and then five of them said, fuck it, we're out. Yes, we'll get to her. <clears throat> Marcus, I do believe, was this your cause? <laughs> Michigan prisons ban Spanish and Swahili dictionary to prevent inmate disruptions. They're maintaining it's a security issue. Um, but Spanish, when it's in a language that we don't have the ability to read, uh, read ourselves and understand exactly what it is we're looking for. We're not able to allow it in, uh, <laughs> Spanish, Spanish. It's, it's, it's inherently classist. It's inherently fucking nationalistic. It's chauvinistic. Take your fucking, it's racist. It's in design to restrict and hold back and further retard the progress of individuals and society as a whole. Yeah. It's, it's, it's designed to make sure that they can't get access to native language resources to better themselves and maybe get out of that situation. It's a whole host of facets attacked, uh, woven into the reason that they're doing that one. God forbid we hire people who actually speak those languages for two. So nobody wants to, nobody, you know why. Uh, dictionaries? Nope. I don't do react content to other people. Sex. I occasionally, if somebody has a clip of something that I need to watch from somebody in a debate or something like that, debate, um, I'll give it a watch, but no, I don't, I don't do, I don't do like stream reacts to other people's content. <clears throat> um, they can use the dictionary to learn what the inmates are saying. Yeah, no, that that they wouldn't. Uh, Mr. Temple was subjected to quote verbally abused in the street, attacked in his own home, and hit around the head by a golf club. The police have acknowledged it was quote a, yeah I've seen this line before. Jay, police have acknowledged it was a genuine human error, but have refused to apologize for it and will not pay damages to his family. Yep. Um, and this sketchy ass shit right here. Um, I don't, mm, okay. Fuck me. There we go. Jackasses. Um, <laughs> I know, right, Viva? Gang jumping gone wrong. Violated one of the rules. Don't know which. Don't know which. We don't talk enough about blue on blue violence. Do they kill each other all the time? Uh, completely unsubstantiated, apocryphal. Know this. Um, a bunch of years back when uh, a residential neighborhood in Boston got put on lock, full lockdown and searched door to door because a cop was found in a uh, vehicle uh, a, block, a block or two away with a fucking bullet in the back of his skull. Um, the Boston PD put the entire fucking area on lock, like full lockdown and they like armored car door to door fucking shit like full violation of, pe of people's civil liberties. Um it came out like a year after that incident that the dude who had been domed was uh, a federal witness. They fucking cut shot their own dude. You know, they shot their own dude. Of course, that's what they did. They shot their own dude, blamed it on some unknown perp in the area and did a massive show of force. They do this shit all the time. Oh, 
What's up, Alexander? Who is your favorite across? I really like Zacafron, but Van Seidel is also good. Demand with absolutely no hair from Defurious Speeding Movies, but I think Zacafron is the best across overall. Loved him in Beeswat and Hisco Movie Call. Uh, yeah, Call. Uh, also love Damn Eel Rat Clint. Uh, Damn Eel Rat Clint. D across from De Happy Poser Movies. Who's your favorite? Is it uh, Tim Chris? Demand with Demission? That just isn't feasible. Oh, Jesus. Will Alexander. Uh, demand with the mission that isn't uh, that just isn't feasible. Uh, all right. Um, yes, I don't know what went down with that LAPD thing, but we know there's some shenanigans they got up to. They they got they got up to it. Um, <laughs> Damn Bill Ratcliffe. Love it. Yep. Um, so here's 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 a fun one. The Toronto the Metropolitan Toronto Police Department. Um, so <laughs> fucking apparently they issued an internal memo warning officers to quote brace for challenging reactions to new race based data on forced strip searches. Oh, also use of force. Yes. Apparently Toronto's publishing some new data on how the police have been using use of, how they've been using force and how they've been applying their strip searches based on, uh, and looking at any potential racial, racial disparities. And the fucking Toronto police issued a memo to their own police officers to quote, Brace for challenging reactions <laughs> to the new race-based data. <laughs> Quote, the results will lead some people to question the hard work you do every day. <laughs> and that the following weeks will be challenging. Uh, our members will be supported and our public comments will emphasize that this exercise is about systemic racism within systems and processes and not about overt racism by our members. <laughs> uh, translated, people are going to be mad we're beating and stripping indigenous and black people. Yep. <laughs> but wow, really? Can't imagine why. Oh... Uh, Four strip searches is a human, right? Uh, challenging reactions, not justified outrage. No, no, Zippy. Challenging reactions. Not justified outrage. Challenging reactions. These people, these people are reactionaries, Zippy. They're just reacting to this, this information. That's, and it's going to be a challenging time for you to process and deal with this negative energy that's coming your way. Yeah, isn't it great? Isn't it great? Just the completely dismantling of generations of raping and pillaging. And just, just oh, that? Don't mind that. That's nothing. Better make a challenge coin. Oh, God, Aspen. You're right. You're right. Better make a challenge coin. Aspen's right. They need a challenge coin. Yeah. I wonder if the memo's got a name or, like, the data's got a name. Oh, shocking, shocking. Uh, yeah, it's it's doesn't it, it's just a uh, the 2019 uh, report uh, Ontario Human Rights Commission report. Um, and I mean, you know, grossly. Hey, did you know Black Torontonians are grossly overrepresented in cases in which police have used force? Oh my God, guys! A North um, uh, a, a, a a white based North American police force has been using excess uh, uh, above and beyond excessive force when dealing with Black people. I'm shocked. Yeah, I mean, this is super fucking critical information to have because I mean we. Definitely weren't aware of this already. Definitely. Definitely. 
<laughs> Zippy. That drives me insane. So we're going to do, this is, this is the old story. Okay. Can I pop this? Yes. It happens suddenly. A oh, for fuck's sake. Rewind. There we go. So this is a Chicago police officer and a black woman walking her dog. It happens suddenly. A Chicago police officer grabs a woman walking her dog, but her attorney says she does not know why it happened. She has no idea why. Attorney shortly after midnight on Saturday, Salter says his client video Nikita Brown. Shortly after midnight on Saturday, Salter says his client, who is a black woman, was approached by a white Chicago police officer as she walked her dog at North Avenue Beach. The uh, officer engaged her in a discussion about leaving the park, which she was fine to do. Now understand this. Please don't, please respect my space. It's respect COVID. Space. Brown recorded her own video, but her camera was knocked down when for some reason the officer grabbed her. Salter says his client was the victim of racial profiling because there were other people out that night who just happened to be white. He makes a very concerted effort to target her. Uh, in a scenario where she's by herself, uh, a woman walking after midnight. I'm still waiting for more than a preliminary briefing. I'd like to get more facts. So after all of the facts, here's what happened. Oops, sorry. Really? Hold on. There we go. There we go. He was allowed to resign. That's what happened after the fact. After the fact, he was allowed to resign. <clears throat> With full pension. Yes, of course. And this is John Hurley? Yeah, it's John Hurley. <clears throat> John Hurley is an interesting case. Uh, so this was, what city was this? I was, where was Hurley? It was Colorado, I know that. Oh, please tell me it was... Arvada, Arvada. Okay, so on our left, uh, on our left, we have Ronald Troike. Um, Ronald Troike was a disgruntled shooter who um, very much wanted to go on a shooting rampage, and on June twenty first, he walked into a Colorado shopping mall. Um, and opened fire. He um, targeted the police that happened to be there um, and any that arrived. Now, the gentleman on the right is a man by the name of Johnny Hurley. Johnny Hurley was the good guy with a gun. This is the proverbial scenario at work. Ronald Troike on the left is your bad guy with a gun. Your good guy with a gun is Johnny on the right. Um, what Johnny did is he jumped, jumped into gear with police officers on scene and actively being shot dead. Um, there was already a cop there and the fucking dude put him down, right? Like with the actual scenario unfolding, Johnny snuck up on him drew his uh, pistol and put him down. He then ran over, he cleared the weapon, and then he died. Because in his act of clearing the weapon, a police officer came around the corner and lit him the fuck up. 
keep in mind, he doesn't meet any description. They had an active shooter description for on site. He doesn't meet a physical description. He doesn't meet clothing description. He does not actually meet the same description as the active shooter. The, um, his, uh, I believe his mother is the one who's, um, suing on his behalf. Um, so yes, this is, this is what happens to the good guy with a gun. He gets shot by the police department. So, June, thank you, for, thank you for the follow. Um, why did that? Oh, that's why. Culture and law enforcement are two just two gangs fighting. How is culture a gang? The fuck does that even mean? Fucking time is a gang. All right. <clears throat> Um, Kaiser, you here? Where's Kaiser? Motherfucker, you here? JK, nope. Nope. That's a shame. I had a Portland story. Portland protesters are, there are, um, federal lawsuits, uh, federal lawsuits been filed against the, uh, Portland, uh, police department. Uh, or, I'm sorry, over, uh, federal agents are included, um, for ex excessive force used during the, uh, Portland protests. And... Here, I have... Oh, seriously? You want me to sign in just for this shit? What the fuck is wrong with you? All right. We good? We good. In U.S. District Court in Portland, attorneys for Black Lives Matter protesters filed suit against federal agents for what they call... Protesters filing. Hey, some of the gear. Say what federal agents did using tear gas and other non lethal munitions was illegal. Kaiser's probably got one of those. Kaiser's probably got one of those. So, good news on that front, at least. We'll see where that goes, though. Who is your favorite uh, across though? Uh, who is my favorite across? Um, I, dude, Will Alexander, I'm not gonna be able to mangle their name for you. I can't do it in your style. You can you can do what you need with their name though. Um, you know what? I I am never disappointed um, when Matthew Lillard is in something. He always gives it his all. He always tries. He's not the world's greatest actor. He's not the fucking classically trained. He's not. I, I Honestly, though, I am never not happy when Matthew Lillard is in something. So Matthew Lillard, Will Alexander. Matthew Lillard. Um, oh, these assholes. Okay. So uh, a Michigan, uh, a Michigan-based Cub Scout, was it a Cub Scout? Yeah, Cub Scout was hanging out with uh, the the Farmington Hills Police Department, and they noticed. The Cub Scouts noticed. Okay, so how young are Cub Scouts? Eight to ten and a half. Cub Scouts are not eight to ten and a half. Okay, the fucking they took them to the range. The Farmington Hills Police Department took the fucking Cub Scouts to the range. And the Cub Scouts m had a point. The Cub Scouts pointed out the only targets that the Farmington Hills Police Department was using were black targets. And not black silhouettes, but actual black people. Like various high res color, they're all black. All of their targets were black people. 
And the fucking, yeah, the Cub Scouts were like, <clears throat> eight to ten years old. They're like, uh, there's some racist shit happening here. Uh, fat spew fill herd. It's Lillard, not Willard. Um, yes. Yeah, the kids are all right. It's a yikes, man. Yeah, the fucking eight to ten year olds were like, what's this about? So they brought it up to their parents. They're like, why is the police department using uh, <laughs> use it, using only black people as as targets? You know? Yeah. It's fucking brilliant. Ah. Uh, This is, this is a crazy fucking story. A little bit, little bit, little bit. Um, this is Brittany, Brittany Batty, B A T T Y E. I don't know, Batty, Batty, Batty. I don't fucking know. Either way, Brittany here. Um, Brittany here is, uh, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> um, Brittany was a police, a police officer for Manchester, uh, New, uh, uh New Hampshire. <laughs> Brittany, uh, kind of, I, I don't look, I'm just going to read this to you verbatim. Because this is kind of like what the fuck territory. <clears throat> Around 12.15 p.m. on April 2nd, a, uh, uh, I think it's Bow, a Bow police officer took a report from a woman filing assault, imprisonment, and other accusation charges against Brittany, 37 years of age, of Logging Hill Road in Bow, New Hampshire. The victim was calling from a friend's house in Concord. The victim later met with an officer who described her as being frightened and timid at the police, uh, police headquarters. The woman said around 6.30 a.m., Brittany became upset because she could not access the woman's cell phone, convinced that she was hiding something, and accused her of stealing her medication. The victim said she had no idea what she was speaking about, but explained that her money, supplements, and other personal items were in a locked cabinet. She began to collect her belongings, including a bag to leave to go to work, the report stated. However, Brittany became more upset and confrontational about the cabinet being locked and then slapped the victim's bag, causing the victim to fall to the floor. Brittany then grabbed the victim by the collar of her, pink, uh, her pink Columbia fleece, which was zipped up all the way. The victim got up, grabbing her phone, and began to record in video mode, sliding her phone under a desk so it could not be seen. The phone recorded video with audio only for the next 23 minutes. The victim then accused Brittany of returning with a small hatchet and hitting the locked cabinet with it. She then began punching the cabinet, saying, I'm going to find a way into the cabinet. The victim stood in front of the cabinet and accused Brittany of grabbing her shoulders and shoving her sideways into the wall. She then picked up the hatchet and began swinging at the cabinet once again. Brittany said, according to the affidavit, dropped the hatchet and began pulling at the victim from behind as she was trying to leave. The victim then puts up her fist to defend herself. While reporting this to, to this, uh, this to me, the officer said, the reporting officer said, the victim appeared extremely terrified based on her body language and tone. As the victim attempted to move into another room, she accused Brittany of wanting to know what was in her bag and demanded to examine her iPad. Allowing her to log into her iPad and not finding anything, the victim accused Brittany of slapping her in the face. She then grabbed her bag, swung the victim into a refrigerator, ripping the straps of the bag. Brittany also then began smashing fruit on the floor, but later cleaned it up, stating, that way you'll have no proof. The officer, after examining the scene, found smashed fruit on the floor of the home. 
Brittany, the report said, removed the cabinet, took it into the garage, preparing to cut it open while the victim attempting to leave via the basement. The report sta uh, uh, stated that Brittany later threw a broom and dustpan at the victim, the dustpan striking her in the upper forehead, cutting her skin, said, the, uh, the officer said, and noted the mark as well as dried blood near her hairline. Brittany was then accused of grabbing the victim again, shutting her into an office where both of her arms blo uh, blocking her and keeping her from leaving. The victim attempted to move Brittany's arms away, but then she was grabbed again by the front of her throat, bent back over an office desk. The officer noted a red mark on her neck, said the victim had been giving, given a strangulation form to fill out. However, Brittany was not charged with second-degree assault, according to the case file. The victim escaped from the office while uh, Brittany's hands were around her neck and attempted to run towards the back door of the house. Brittany, however, was able to block the back door of the house by standing in the doorway. She then began uh, shoving the victim repeatedly and pulling at her fleece. The officer took pictures of the fleece and bag, both of which were damaged, according to the report. After leaving the home, the victim walked along the road to Interstate 89 and then to Hall Street, where she made a phone call from a local business to a friend to get help. The officer learned a, a later 911 caller reported a woman matching the victim's description walking on the I-89 around 8 a.m. Nobody did anything, by the way. Note that. Uh, an off-duty officer also saw the victim walking on the road after leaving work. Also did nothing. Note that. Uh, so we have two interactions with the police department so far from this victim, and nothing has happened. Uh, the reporting officer called New Hampshire State Police to reach out to the witness, but they did not have her info. Description on file with the state police, however, did match what the victim was wearing during the interview. Imagine that. Second officer then met with Batye, fucking Brittany, at Manchester Police Headquarters to discuss the incident just before 5 p.m. <clears throat> Quote, Brittany was relaxed and dismissive of the allegations and mentioned that the victim probably made up a good story. Brittany admitted to smashing the fruit, the report said, but didn't have much to say and was arrested. Charged with seven counts of domestic violence, simple assault, seven counts of simple assault, two counts of domestic violence, false imprisonment, single count of false imprisonment, and a single count of criminal mischief. Later, a second false imprisonment charge was added. Notice we don't have the strangulation assault charge, secondary uh, assault charge on that one either. She was held on preventative detention, but released on bail. Um, they, they will be doing a half-day trial. Um, as of right now, she's on paid administrative leave pending the case's outcome. Yeah, 40%. Brittany here. Hmm, we'll deal with that in a second if he can survive. <clears throat> Brittany here is the um, quintessential lesbian police officer, domestic violence, the domestic abuser. She, she's what it looks like. Crazy as fuck, too. Crazy as fuck. Um, do I have the video? Oh, I can't show the video. That's right, I can't show, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um... Leave it at that. Oh, it's a good run of Popo's Bizarre Adventures. We'll end on the classic, uh, classic forty percent. Can we? We'll 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 end on the classic forty percent. So, yeah. <laughs>